What's up folks, it's your buddy Fatal Roadie. Tonight we're going to be doing the Smackdown review. Before I start, the news broke today that Daniel Bryan was officially cleared to wrestle by WWE doctors. So we started off tonight with a recap of Daniel Bryan's career, his retirement from wrestling, and his eventual return to the ring. Daniel Bryan comes out, he thanks the crowd, he talks about his retirement, thanks a whole bunch of people, it was a very emotional bit, and then he hints at a WrestleMania appearance. He says although he doesn't know if he's going to be competing in WrestleMania, he will be competing in the WWE ring. This is actually pretty interesting. I'll be the first one to admit, when I got back into wrestling after a while, I was right at the tail end of Daniel Bryan's career, right before his retirement. But from everything that I've seen on YouTube and everything like that, it will be interesting to see him return to the ring. Now normally, I always put down long intros like this. But being the fact that it involves somebody getting back into the ring, been cleared from being injured, such as what Daniel Bryan's gone through, I'll make an exception in this case. It was a pretty good opening to SmackDown. We then go to our first match, Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura. We have AJ Styles at the announcer's table. This is a really good match. There was a lot of back and forth, a bunch of near falls, and a few false finishers. After a series of roll-up attempts between Rusev and Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura got the pin on Rusev. After the match, Aiden English came in and attacked Shinsuke Nakamura. Rusev joined in, and before AJ Styles was able to get into the ring to help, Shinsuke Nakamura cleaned house. We then go to our next match, Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger. Ooh, that is. This is basically just a glorified squash match. Baron Corbin won with the end of days. I really didn't see where this was going. Apparently both of them are going to be in the Battle Royal at WrestleMania, which has proven many times to catapult a superstar's career. My ass! We then go to our next match, Charlotte Flair versus Natalia. Oh my god, Charlotte Flair is not fighting somebody from the Riot Squad this week. Both competitors had a lot of offense in this match. There was a ton of high-risk moves. After Natalia did a superplex from the top rope on Charlotte Flair, both were laid out. Carmella comes running in with a referee. She tried to cash in her Money in the Bank contract, but before any of that happened, Charlotte Flair attacked Carmella, which allowed Natalia to roll up Charlotte Flair for the win. This was a decent match. I kind of liked it. This still brings up the when is Carmella going to actually do anything. Seems like any time whenever she tries to cash in, it's always a quick tease and then it goes away. We then see a couple promos throughout the night of the Mixed Match Challenge. And once again, we have these words on the screen. We all know what I think about them. We then have Jimmy Uso versus Luke Harper. Before the match, the Usos cut a promo about the Bludgeon Brothers. This is a pretty good match. While Luke Harper was outside of the ring, Jimmy Uso was setting up a dive, but Eric Rowan was standing on the apron and stopped Jimmy Uso dead in his tracks. During a bit of confusion through everything, Jay Uso super kicked Luke Harper, but that wasn't able to slow him down as Luke Harper got a discus clothesline on Jimmy Uso for the pin. I'm pretty much going to be guessing that it's going to be the Usos versus the Bludgeon Brothers at WrestleMania, but we still have a few more weeks before that happens, so we'll just have to see when that decision is made. We come back from a commercial to have Jinder Mahal in the ring, and he's telling the crowd that he doesn't have to be here. Bye. He calls the crowd a bunch of hypocrites. Then Bobby Roode comes out. He calls Jinder Mahal a hypocrite. As he's getting into the ring, he starts to talk about how when he wins at WrestleMania, it's going to be and before he gets to glorious, Randy Orton comes out. He tells Jinder Mahal that he can't win without his little stooge, Samir Singh, which gets Jinder Mahal all fired up. He then throws Samir Singh to the wolves and bolts out of the ring. Samir ends up getting a draping DDT from Randy Orton, and as he's setting up for an RKO, Bobby Roode comes running up and gives him a glorious DDT. Randy Orton and Bobby Roode try to do their finishers on one another, but nothing happens, and everyone's just standing there looking at the WrestleMania sign and each other, and we're going to have a triple threat match at WrestleMania. We then have Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan from the Riot Squad. Jesus Christ, once again, we have these matches. God. Seriously. How many times are we going to see these same people over and over again? I'm not even going to comment on the match. Becky Lynch and Naomi won it. Next week, Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan are going to win it, and then we're going to keep going until WrestleMania. Thankfully, everyone's been entered into the Women's Battle Royal, so we're not going to be seeing a dedicated match with these people. Which brings us to the final bit of the night. Daniel Bryan's back in the ring. He calls out Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. They come out. They congratulate him on his news. They start to suck up to Daniel Bryan, saying that they could be the dream team. Daniel Bryan shows everybody what happened last week. And after Daniel Bryan admitting that he was living vicariously through Kevin Owens, Owens and Sami Zayn. He says, unfortunately, I'm going to have to fire you. So Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are fired.
fired. Daniel Bryan shakes their hand. And then Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn attack Daniel Bryan. They beat him down. Daniel Bryan starts to fire back. He drop kicks each of them in the corners. As he's giving the yes kicks to Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn comes in, beats him down. They give him a haluva kick. They bring him outside of the ring and Kevin Owens power bombs him into the side of the ring. And we end tonight's SmackDown with Daniel Bryan being put onto a stretcher as we close. This was actually a pretty good SmackDown. The matches were pretty decent, with the exception of the women's tag match that we've seen 10,842 times. But everything else was pretty good. It's good to see that Daniel Bryan is clear to return to the ring. Now I'm pretty much going to be guessing, just like with everybody else, we're going to have a tag team match, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. But, like I've always said, we're just going to have to see until the week to come. We'll find out next week, I'm sure. But I'll do it for this episode of SmackDown Review. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's SmackDown and what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.